Slavery in the Ottoman Empire was a legal and significant part of the Ottoman Empire's economy and society. The main sources of slaves were war captives and organized enslavement expeditions in North and East Africa, Eastern Europe, the Balkans, and the Caucasus. It has been reported that the selling price of slaves fell after large military operations. In Constantinople, present-day Istanbul, the administrative and political center of the empire, about a fifth of the population consisted of slaves in 1609. 16th and 17th century customs statistics suggest that Istanbul's additional slave import from the Black Sea may have totaled around 2.5 million from 1450 to 1700. Even after several measures to ban slavery in the late 19th century, the practice continued largely unabated into the early 20th century. As late as 1908, female slaves were still sold in the Ottoman Empire. Sexual slavery was a central part of the Ottoman slave system throughout the history of the institution. A member of the Ottoman slave class, called a KUL in Turkish, could achieve high status. Castrated harem guards and janissaries are some of the better known positions a slave could hold, but slaves were actually often at the forefront of Ottoman politics. A large percentage of officials in the Ottoman government were bought slaves raised free, and integral to the success of the Ottoman Empire from the 14th century into the 19th. Many officials themselves own a large number of slaves, although the Sultan himself owned by far the most. By raising and specially training slaves as officials in palace schools such as Enderun, the Ottomans created administrators with intricate knowledge of government and fanatic loyalty. <laughs> Early Ottoman slavery In the mid-14th century, Murad I built an army of slaves, referred to as the Kapikulu. The new force was based on the Sultan's right to a fifth of the war booty, which he interpreted to include captives taken in battle. The captive slaves converted to Islam and trained in the Sultan's personal service. The Devsirme system could be considered a form of slavery because the Sultans had absolute power over them. However, as the servant or KUL of the Sultan had high status within Ottoman society, they could become the highest officers of state and the military elite, and all taken children but not their parents were well remunerated. Slaves were traded in special marketplaces called ESIR or Yesir that were located in most towns and cities. It is said that Sultan Mehmed II, the conqueror, established the first Ottoman slave market in Constantinople in the 1460s, probably where the former Byzantine slave market had stood. According to Nicholas de Nicolay, there were slaves of all ages and both sexes, they were displayed naked to be thoroughly checked, especially children and young women, by possible buyers. <laughs> Ottoman slavery in Central and Eastern Europe In the Devsirme, which connotes draft, blood tax, or child collection, young Christian boys from the Balkans and Anatolia were taken from their homes and families, converted to Islam, and enlisted into the most famous branch of the Kapikulu, the Janissaries, a special soldier class of the Ottoman army that became a decisive faction in the Ottoman invasions of Europe. Most of the military commanders of the Ottoman forces, imperial administrators, and de facto rulers of the empire, such as Sokolu Mehmed Pasha, were recruited in this way. By 1609, the Sultan's Kapikulu forces increased to about 100,000. A Hutterite chronicle reports that in 1605, during the Long Turkish War, some 240 Hutterites were abducted from their homes in Upper Hungary by the Ottoman Turkish army and their Tatar allies, and sold into Ottoman slavery. Domestic slavery was not as common as military slavery. On the basis of a list of estates belonging to members of the ruling class kept in Edirne between 1545 and 1659, the following data was collected, out of 93 estates, 41 had slaves. The total number of slaves in the estates was 140, 54 female and 86 male. 134 of them bore Muslim names, 5 were not defined, and 1 was a Christian woman. Some of these slaves appear to have been employed on farms. In conclusion, the ruling class, because of extensive use of warrior slaves and because of its own high purchasing capacity, was undoubtedly the single major group keeping the slave market alive in the Ottoman Empire. Rural slavery was largely a phenomenon endemic to the Caucasus region, which was carried to Anatolia and Rumelia after the Circassian migration in 1864. 
Conflicts frequently emerged within the immigrant community and the Ottoman establishment intervened on the side of the slaves at selective times. The Crimean Khanate maintained a massive slave trade with the Ottoman Empire and the Middle East until the early 18th century. In a series of slave raids euphemistically known as the harvesting of the steppe, Crimean Tatars enslaved East Slavic peasants. The Polish Lithuanian Commonwealth and Russia suffered a series of Tatar invasions, the goal of which was to loot, pillage, and capture slaves into JASYR. The borderland area to the southeast was in a state of semi permanent warfare until the 18th century. It is estimated that up to 75% of the Crimean population consisted of slaves or freed slaves. Prices and taxes A study of the slave market of Ottoman Crete produces details about the prices of slaves. Factors such as age, skin color, virginity etc. significantly influenced prices. The most expensive slaves were those between 10 and 35 years of age, with the highest prices for European virgin girls 13 to 25 years of age and teenaged boys. The cheaper slaves were those with disabilities and sub-Saharan Africans. Prices in Crete ranged between 65 and 150. Asadi gurus. See kurus. But even the lowest prices were affordable to only high-income persons. For example, in 1717 a 12-year-old boy with mental disabilities was sold for 27 gurus, an amount that could buy in the same year 462 kilograms pounds of lamb meat, 933 kilograms pounds of bread or 1,385 l 366 US gal of milk. In 1671 a female slave was sold in Crete for 350 gurus, while at the same time the value of a large two-floor house with a garden in Chania was 300 gurus. There were various taxes to be paid on the importation and selling of slaves. One of them was the pensik, or penk yek, tax, literally meaning one-fifth. This taxation was based on verses of the Quran, according to which one-fifth of the spoils of war belonged to God, to the Prophet and his family, to orphans, to those in need and to travelers. The Ottomans probably started collecting pensik at the time of Sultan Murad I Pensik was collected both in money and in kind, the latter including slaves as well. Tax was not collected in some cases of war captives. With war captives, slaves were given to soldiers and officers as a motive to participate in war. The recapture of runaway slaves was a job for private individuals called Yuvachis. Whoever managed to find a runaway slave would collect a fee of good news from the Yuvachi, and the latter took this fee plus other expenses from the slave's owner. Slaves could also be rented, inherited, pawned, exchanged, or given as gifts. Barbary slave raids For centuries, large vessels on the Mediterranean relied on European galley slaves supplied by Ottoman and Barbary slave traders. Hundreds of thousands of Europeans were captured by Barbary pirates and sold as slaves in North Africa and the Ottoman Empire between the 16th and 19th centuries. These slave raids were conducted largely by Arabs and Berbers rather than Ottoman Turks. However, during the height of the Barbary slave trade in the 16th and 17th centuries, the Barbary states were subject to Ottoman jurisdiction and were ruled by Ottoman pashas. Furthermore, many slaves captured by the Barbary corsairs were sold eastward into Ottoman territories before, during, and after Barbary's period of Ottoman rule. <laughs> Zanj slaves As there were restrictions on the enslavement of Muslims and people of the book, Jews and Christians, pagan areas in Africa were a popular source of slaves. Known as the Zanj Bantu, these slaves were mainly drawn from the African Great Lakes region as well as Central Africa. The Zanj were employed in households, on plantations and in the army as slave soldiers. Some could ascend to high-rank officials but in general were inferior to European and Caucasian slaves. One of the only ways for Zanj slaves to serve in high-ranking roles was to be one of the African eunuchs of the Ottoman palace. 
This position was used as a political tool by Sultan Murad III as an attempt to destabilize the Grand Vizier by introducing another source of power to the capital. After being purchased by a member of the Ottoman court, Mullah Ali was introduced to the first chief black eunuch, Mehmed Aga. Due to Mehmed Aga's influence, Mullah Ali was able to make connections with prominent colleges and tutors of the day, including Hoka Sadadin Effendi, the tutor of Murad III. Through the network he had built with the help of his education and the black eunuchs, Mullah Ali secured several positions early on. He worked as a teacher in Istanbul, a deputy judge, and an inspector of royal endowments. In 1620, Mullah Ali was appointed as chief judge of the capital and in 1621 he became the Kadiaskar, or chief judge, of the European provinces and the first black man to sit on the imperial council. At this time, he had risen to such power that a French ambassador described him as the person who truly ran the empire. Although Mullah Ali was often challenged because of his blackness and his connection to the African eunuchs, he was able to defend himself through his powerful network of support and his own intellectual productions. As a prominent scholar, he wrote an influential book in which he used logic and the Quran to debunk stereotypes and prejudice against dark skinned people and delegitimize arguments for why Africans should be slaves. Today, tens of thousands of Afro Turks, the descendants of the Zanj slaves in the Ottoman Empire, continue to live in modern Turkey. Mustafa Olpak, who is an Afro Turk, founded the first officially recognized organization of Afro Turks, the Africans Culture and Solidarity Society in Avalik. Olpak claims that in modern Turkey only about 2,000 African former slaves have survived and live in modern Turkey. <laughs> <laughs> slaves in the Imperial Harem The concubines of the Ottoman Sultan consisted chiefly of purchased slaves. The Sultan's concubines were generally of Christian origin. The mother of a Sultan, though technically a slave, received the extremely powerful title of Valide Sultan which raised her to the status of a ruler of the empire see Sultanate of Women. One notable example was Kosum Sultan, daughter of a Greek Christian priest, who dominated the Ottoman Empire during the early decades of the 17th century. Roxolana, also known as Harem Sultan, another notable example, was the favorite wife of Suleiman the Magnificent. The concubines were guarded by enslaved eunuchs, themselves often from pagan Africa. The eunuchs were headed by the Kizlar Aga, Aga of the slave girls. While Islamic law forbade the emasculation of a man, Ethiopian Christians had no such compunctions, thus, they enslaved and emasculated members of territories to the south and sold the resulting eunuchs to the Ottoman port. The Coptic Orthodox Church participated extensively in the slave trade of eunuchs. Coptic priests sliced the penis and testicles off boys around the age of eight in a castration operation. The eunuch boys were then sold in the Ottoman Empire. The majority of Ottoman eunuchs endured castration at the hands of the Copts at Abu Jerb Monastery on Mount Gebel Eter. Slave boys were captured from the African Great Lakes region and other areas in Sudan like Darfur and Kordofan then sold to customers in Egypt. During the operation, the Coptic clergymen chained the boys to tables and after slicing their sexual organs off, stuck bamboo catheters into the genital area, then submerged them in sand up to their necks. The recovery rate was 10%. The resulting eunuchs fetched large profits in contrast to eunuchs from other areas. Sexual slavery Circassians, Syrians, and Nubians were the three primary races of females who were sold as sex slaves in the Ottoman Empire. Circassian girls were described as fair and light-skinned and were frequently enslaved by Crimean Tatars then sold to Ottomans. They were the most expensive, reaching up to 500 pounds sterling and the most popular with the Turks. Second in popularity were Syrian girls, with their dark eyes, dark hair, and light brown skin, and came largely from coastal regions in Anatolia. Their price could reach up to £30 sterling. They were described as having good figures when young. Nubian girls were the cheapest and least popular, fetching up to £20 sterling. Throughout the 18th and 19th centuries, sexual slavery was not only central to Ottoman practice but a critical component of imperial governance and elite social reproduction. Dimmi boys taken in the Devsirme could also become sexual slaves, though usually they worked in places like bathhouses and coffeehouses. 
They became teleks masseurs, kochiks cross-dressing dancers, or sakis wine pourers for as long as they were young and beardless. Topic: <laughs> Decline and suppression of Ottoman slavery. Responding the influence and pressure of European countries in the 19th century, the empire began taking steps to curtail the slave trade, which had been legally valid under Ottoman law since the beginning of the empire. One of the important campaigns against Ottoman slavery and slave trade was conducted in the Caucasus by the Russian authorities. A series of decrees were promulgated that initially limited the slavery of white persons, and subsequently that of all races and religions. In 1830, a firman of Sultan Mahmud II gave freedom to white slaves. This category included Circassians, who had the custom of selling their own children, enslaved Greeks who had revolted against the empire in 1821, and some others. Attempting to suppress the practice, another firman abolishing the trade of Georgians and Circassians was issued in October, 1854. Later, slave trafficking was prohibited in practice by enforcing specific conditions of slavery in Sharia, Islamic law, even though Sharia permitted slavery in principle. For example, under one provision, a person who was captured could not be kept a slave if they had already been Muslim prior to their capture. Moreover, they could not be captured legitimately without a formal declaration of war, and only the sultan could make such a declaration. As late Ottoman sultans wished to halt slavery, they did not authorize raids for the purpose of capturing slaves, and thereby made it effectively illegal to procure new slaves. Although those already in slavery remained slaves, the Ottoman Empire and 16 other countries signed the 1890 Brussels Conference Act for the suppression of the slave trade. Clandestine slavery persisted into the early 20th century. A circular by the Ministry of Internal Affairs in October 1895 warned local authorities that some steamships stripped Zanj sailors of their certificates of liberation and threw them into slavery. Another circular of the same year reveals that some newly freed Zanj slaves were arrested based on unfounded accusations, imprisoned and forced back to their lords. An instruction of the Ministry of Internal Affairs to the Valley of Basora of 1897 ordered that the children of liberated slaves be issued separate certificates of liberation to avoid both being enslaved themselves and separated from their parents. George Young, second secretary of the British Embassy in Constantinople, wrote in his Corpus of Ottoman Law, published in 1905, that at time of writing the slave trade in the empire was practiced only as contraband. The trade continued until World War I. Henry Morgenthau Sr., who served as the U.S. ambassador in Constantinople from 1913 until 1916, reported in his Ambassador Morgenthau's story that there were gangs that traded white slaves during those years. He also wrote that Armenian girls were sold as slaves during the Armenian Genocide of 1915. The Young Turks adopted an anti slavery stance in the early 20th century. Sultan Abdul Hamid II's personal slaves were freed in 1909, but members of his dynasty were allowed to keep their slaves. Mustafa Kemal Ataturk ended legal slavery in the Turkish Republic, but in an ambivalent manner. Turkey waited until 1933 to ratify the 1926 League of Nations Convention on the Suppression of Slavery. Illegal sales of girls were reported in the early 1930s. Legislation explicitly prohibiting slavery was adopted in 1964. See also Arab slave trade Barbary slave trade Islam and slavery disambiguation Afro Turks The lustful Turk Topic Notes <laughs>